she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And last, if you'll turn to 1 John chapter 2. We're starting at the 15th verse. So there, say amen. amen. Starting with the 15th verse, it says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abide forever. And may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now, the Lord made me 
you say this this morning, and I said, Lord, I don't want to say this. But as those of you know, if you're going to be obedient, you say it as he says. He says, you right. say it like I say it. All right. right. You can say it how I say it. Right. And I'll do that. I don't know much about Paul. I don't know much about Paul. My father was a married man who committed adultery with my mother, who was a young, innocent woman. My father had my brother, or my mother had my brother who was older than me, and my father abused him and damaged him greatly. But he left our house when I was only one year old before I was old enough for him to abuse me. So I didn't know much about fathers. I only spoke to the man one time in 50 years. It was when my brother hunted him down when he was age 19. I was 19. My brother was 21. And I spoke to him on the phone, and I thought he might say he regretted some of that. And the only thing he said he regretted was I was born. Mm. So that's the father figure I knew. Now my mother, needing a man, as some women ought to do, she married again. So I had a stepfather. My stepfather didn't have much use for me, but he was there. So I didn't learn a loving father. The first one left, and the second one just stayed at arm's distance from me. And so I didn't learn about it. So I didn't know much about father. Other than I didn't want to be one. Because I didn't know much about that. So then when I go to church and they talk about God the Father, mm -hmm. all I can think of is a man who left me, a man who regretted I was born, and a man that wouldn't even talk to me. So how could I come into that situation mm -hmm. and have a relationship with a God like that? Mm -hmm. So I never knew my new God the Father like that until recent days. Until recent days. Mm -hmm. So there are some of us that have that same kind of relationship with our fathers, or lack thereof. And so when we talk about God the Father, we talk about his house, we don't even know how to relate. We got people up here talking about how you need to love your daddy, and you're like, I don't know who my daddy is. And even if he did, he ain't very good. So God said, I have to preamble with that. I don't know who that's for, but it's for someone. So we come to the word, and the word speaks of a man saying to Jesus, Blessed be the man who eats bread from the kingdom of God. Blessed be that man. But the question is, when you say the kingdom of God, what exactly does that mean? If you don't know what the kingdom of God means, how you can be blessed by eating some bread. You're sitting there saying, I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know where this bread is, and I don't know how to eat it, so I feel like an outsider looking in. But in Matthew 6, 33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So I always wondered what that meant. So I went and looked at the, you know, the Bible is not written in English. That part was written in Greek. And I went and took a look at what that word means. The word kingdom means that is the authority and power that comes from royal inheritance. So if you throw that in there, and we're talking about eating bread, the kingdom of God, or seek ye first, what it's saying is, is seek ye first the authority and the power that comes from inheritance of God in his righteousness and all things that he added unto you. So that means I better start understanding what I inherited. Because I'll tell you, all I inherited from my daddy was iniquity. I spent most of my life trying to deny my daddy. I didn't mention his name. I didn't mention his name tonight. Thank you, Jesus. So, so to come and seek that, God the Father, the one that many of us do not know, he prepares a table for us. Listen to me, 
saints every time we get. Let me say that again. He prepares a table for his children every time we gather. He prepares it on Sunday morning. He prepares it at Sunday school. He prepares it at Bible study on Wednesday night. He prepares it on Saturday night. He prepares it on Saturday morning prayer. Every time the saints gather, a table has been prepared. He prepares the table before you even arrive. What kind of father would invite his children and have nothing for them? Even the Bible says even your evil fathers aren't going to give you a scorpion when you ask for bread. So what about your heavenly father? And yet, many of us do not understand that our father is that good. We don't understand that. And because we don't understand that, we come up with excuses. Now, the Bible says in Hebrews 10 and 25, mm -hmm. it said, let us not forsake the gathering of the brethren so we can exhort one another as the day arrives. Yeah. Amen. And yet many of us don't gather. What we do is we give excuses. Mm -hmm. Now, I ain't point no fingers at nobody about giving excuses because the Bible says they all were in one accord. Right. Let me say that one more time. It said the one thing about the saints is they were all in one accord giving excuses. And I can say it because I was a chief excuse giver. Every one he listed in the Bible, I gave. It says in the Bible, it says that one said to, um, one said to the man when his servant came, and by the way, that's the Holy Spirit drawing in or somebody led by the Holy Spirit. So one of them says, well, I bought me some land. Well, I know a little something about buying land. Because buying land is like building and owning a house. And one of them said, I can't come to the supper because I bought me some land. And I know a little bit about that because I was a house builder. And I was buying land all the time. And I could never tell my wife, honey, you've got to go to church. Well, I'm dealing with the house. Another one said, I bought five yoke boxes. That's your business. Says, I can't go to the house of the Lord. i got business to attend to. I'm working. I used to reschedule my day so I worked when church was in. Did I say that out loud? I used to reschedule my day. I was self-employed. I made sure when they announced the things on church, I scheduled a meeting to meet somebody and do some business. So I could tell my wife, oh, I'd go if it wasn't for this. Oh, I'm sure nobody's ever done that. I must have just talked to myself. It also said, I can't do this thing. I can't come to your table because I'm getting married. Well, how do I'm getting married. I'm having me a family. So we got three excuses that are being that are being made in this particular thing. We have the excuse not to come to the table because of our home, because of our business, and because of our family. Does anybody in here ever make that excuse? I'll just wait. But the Bible said that when that man heard those excuses, he became angry. Well, we know Jesus had prophetically talked about his father. Mm -hmm. So when he heard those excuses, he's become angry. Now, most of you probably believe God's not going to get mad at me because I'm making excuses. I mean, I'm taking care of my house. I'm taking care of my business. I'm taking care of my family. God's not going to be mad at me. Well, good for you because he was mad at me. He was mad at me, and, and when he gave me all those things, and he was mad at me. He took every single one away except my family. And he came close to doing that. Mm. I was cursing the devil and I learned from the Lord. Why are you cursing the devil and that's me? Mm. Let me say that one more time. Sometimes you're cursing the devil when God's meddling in your life. Did I say that? Sometimes you're cursing the devil when God's meddling into your life. Uh -huh. 
something better than what I had. I built a house with my own two hands. And it was paid for when I was born. And last year I got thrown out of it. Mom now. But he had taken it back in 2004 when it got foreclosed on. I was able to bring with the guy who had bought it. So he took it back in 2004. He gave me a house. He gave me a business. In my business, I built a hundred houses. I had a business in 1996. Did $6 million. I wrote $500,000 worth of checks every month. By 2004, I didn't have a dollar. Not a dollar. And I promise you on that six million, I was not tired. It was at this church the Lord told me, every dollar you thought you'd save in a tithe, I took from it. I didn't tithe, the devourer came rolling through. So here is making these excuses, and in this family intervention, I encourage you saints, don't be making those same excuses. Because it wasn't until seven years later, I was telling this pastor on Thursday, I was like King Nebuchadnezzar, and I stood on top of my empire, and I gloated, and I said, look at what I built. And then it all was gone. My kids were running wild. My wife was in the bedroom trying to keep from killing herself. You can be married and not be married. Amen. And they've done that a few times. And so I cried out to God. And oh, I, he knew my excuses. But the thing that God revealed to me in this last month for you saints, because I know you reach use these excuses. The thing he did is he wants you to really know the reason that you're not coming to his table. What I just told you was the obvious. But what I'm going to tell you now is the truth. God said you got to go back to the beginning. Because that is not just a story about two people fictitiously being written. Whether you realize it or not, Adam and Eve are our ancestors. Adam and Eve are our ancestors. Their DNA is running through you. I got some of the DNA in me, and you got some of it in you. So what they come up against, we come up against. What they struggled with, we struggled with. When they sin, and let's not kid ourselves, everybody sins. The Bible says all fall short of the glory of God. We all sin. Some of us make a little less than others, but we all sin. And sin is sin. Half a dozen sins per day is just as bad in God's eyes as a hunt. So we all sin. So if we all sin, we're just like Adam and Eve. And what did Adam and Eve do when they sinned? They got scared. Did they not? How many of you are scared? Let's be honest. How many of you are afraid of God? How many of you feel if you come to his table, you're going to get a woman? So it's like, well, if I gotta come to church, I'm gonna be in the farthest row back as possible. <laughs> Close to the door, where I can make a clean escape. <laughs> Amen? Amen. So I know where you stand by how far back you sit. <laughs> so what do they do? try to cover themselves ridiculously with fig leaves. They hide behind a tree, and the voice of the Lord comes rolling in, saying, where are they? Well, I got a word for you today, see the fig. See the fig, where are they? Where are they? Not at your daddy's table. If you're not at your daddy's table, where are they? And you know, the funny thing is, is that if you don't know where you are, how can you get directions to his table? If you don't know where you are, how can you get directions to his table? How can we even help you? So all he wanted out of them was a little truth. All he wanted out of them was a little truth. They were scared, and they were naked, and they were 
ashamed. And so the first point I want to make is many of us ain't coming to the table because we're ashamed. We're ashamed. I was ashamed. Why do you think I didn't tell you about my daddy? I was ashamed. The first time I ever preached up here about get your house in order, I had to say that I found my mother dead at age 13 who committed suicide. I got up a 13-year-old boy. I got up to go to school, and there was my mom on the floor. Lord made me preach that the very first time I preach. Every time I preach, I have to expose more of myself. All right. Amen. Now, I don't know if any of you have seen that, but I'll tell you, it's not very pretty. It's not pretty at all. Especially when all I heard during 13 years of her drinking is she regretted having me. <laughs> Beware of what you say to the children. Amen. Beware of what you say to your children. It's a shame. It's a shame. I was ashamed to tell my brother who couldn't handle it at age 25 when he got to his head and blew his head off. I was ashamed. I was ashamed to say I lost my business, a multi-million dollar business, and had to go bankrupt. And I ended up owing people money. It took me years to pay back. I was ashamed. I was ashamed to tell them that even though I was married, my wife and I could barely speak to one another. And then my children, even though I didn't allow drugs in my house, they were doing them over town. I was ashamed. Mm. What would people think? What would people think I can't go to? If I go near that supper table, somebody's going to greet my business. Somebody's going to open my mail. You know, it don't work that way. You know, if you try to do what's right, God don't read your mail in front of other people. Come on. Amen. The job of the prophet is to build up the church. To exhort. To edify. The only way your business is going to get read, read is if you're tearing the church down and he's got to shut you down. Hey. That's the only Amen. time. So I was ashamed. Maybe you guys have never been ashamed. Maybe you've had these glorious lives. Just from glory to glory. That wasn't my life. That wasn't my life at all. So I had shame. I didn't want to come before the Lord. I didn't want to do it. Oh, I didn't mind coming to church. Do you guys know that coming to church is not synonymous with coming in the kingdom? Coming in the church is like being in the outer court. Sociable. How do you do it? How do you do it? Isn't that what we do? If all you got for me is how you doing, you ain't doing very well. You saying something now. Praise the Lord. So, so here you're out in the social court. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How's that help me? How about when I'm pretty low, you come up and say, the Lord said to me, give you a word of encouragement. Because I pray for you. That would do, and I'm doing fine. Other than that, I ain't doing so well. So you're ashamed. You're ashamed. There are many people in this church that are ashamed. They, they won't step forward. They won't come to the table. They say, I can't do that thing. If they knew what my daddy did to me. If they knew about how I was molested. If they knew what I used to drink and smoke. If they knew how much I was hurt. And here it is. How much I've hurt others. Oh, they don't want me. I used to tell my best friend before I met Daddy, would you let your sister marry a man like you? I said, no. Because in those days, you get filled with hate. You get filled with anger. And God has to break it. And God has to break it. He's got to break you to break it. All right. So I learned in the Bible, if we go back to uh, Genesis chapter 3, in that 8 through 13 section, 
I learned that even though they had sinned, and even though their dad was upset, he still covered them. He still had provision to restore them because he already knew what they were going to do. So do you know that God's providing that same provision for you and I? I had to learn that I had a father that loved me so much. He sent a son who would die on a cross and bleed for me. So even after what I did, what he did was great. Can I say that one more time? What I did was not as great as what he did. So the debt I created, his currency paid for. And I had to start realizing that I was being hauled into the body and I was covered by the blood and I had to understand these things. And I'm telling you right now, the hardest thing I never had to understand, just saying, was that I was somebody's wife. Just saying. But if you don't know you're the wife of God and of Christ, and I'm talking to the men now, you don't know that, you don't know how to approach it. That's a word for somebody. You go approach a husband as a husband, you see what you get. You're going to pop in the nose. You better approach him as he wants to be approached. Because if you ain't his wife, you ain't nothing. If you ain't his wife, you ain't nothing. And so we have this shame. So I encourage you saints today, don't be ashamed. What are you ashamed of? Who's your judge? Not me. I mean, I'm doing it now, but I used to. I ain't going to condemn you. When I was young, I drank to excess. And I'm going to tell you why I drank. And I'm speaking to the people that drink today. I drank because I wanted to kill myself. I made sure I drank enough and drove not knowing where I was going. Because I wanted to die. So some of you that have been drinking, I just say it. I'm just saying there's some people that have it. But you know, the funny thing is, is my father somehow drove me home 40 miles when I was blacked out. Again, and again, and again. Isn't that crazy? And so, the second thing, we know that our shame is one of our excuses, that's a reason. Let me give you a second reason. Adam says, the woman you gave me had me do the same. Which means the second reason, if we're all going to be honest, as family, is you're blaming God. You're blaming God. You don't want to come to his table because you believe it's his fault you're where you're at. I know I felt that way. Hey, I didn't pick which daddy was going to bring me into this world. God, you did. So I'm blaming you. I didn't get what happened to my mama. She did. So I'm blaming you. And it took a lot of years, actually the last two, if I'm being honest, for God to show me I had to go through all that to stand here before you today. Everything you go through, good and bad, is for a purpose. All right. Amen. If I haven't gone through nothing, how am I going to help you? Right. Do you really want to hear what a great life I had? You go, that ain't me. When's he going to be done? So you can blame God all you want. But it wasn't his fault. He might have permitted it. But it wasn't his fault. The Bible says that all things will work out. That's right. For those that love God. So how many of us don't come to the table because we basically blame it? It's his fault. I ain't coming over to the table. If I thought you were against me, am I coming to your table? I don't think so. Third reason. Third reason is what Eve said. She said, the devil made me do it. <laughs> so you either ain't coming because you're ashamed, you ain't coming because you blame the guy setting the table, or you're blaming the one keeping you from the table. The devil deceived me. 
I was deceived. I didn't know. I didn't know what was happening. Well, that's a lie. Because as we learned in 1 John, that we actually do like the things of the world. I talk to anybody here. You know, this room was filled with only people that didn't like things in the world and you have humor. I just want that to settle in there. If this room were filled with people that don't like things of the world, it'd be an empty room. I mean, most of the excuses we use are things of the world, are they not? A house, business, even your family. We love the world. Amen? So we like the things of the world. We're not supposed to, because it says when you like things in the world, when you love things in the world, the Father's not in you. Mm. So the Father's not in you when you get to that point. So think about this. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Now if you come to me and say, I ain't got no lust of the eyes, and I ain't got no lust of the flesh, I know you've got the pride of life. Because that just isn't true. So we have to fight that every day with the power of the Spirit. We have to fight that every day and say, that's not for me. That's not for me. So in a family intervention, all God wants to do is say, if I didn't love you, I wouldn't chase you. Now what's it going to take to get you to my table? Why is it that you barely drag in on Sunday morning and you're not even on time? I told you I'm going to just say it as it says. Why is it you only come on Sunday and you ain't on time then? What exactly are you doing? Where exactly is it so important? You're supposed to seek the authority of the Word of God, but you have no time for Bible study. You're supposed to see the power of the Holy Ghost, but you have no time for prayer. The devil has begotten. The devil is a liar, because without these things, you're bait. You ain't got the authority of the Word of God, and you ain't got the power of the Holy Ghost, you're bait. And you wonder why a little time goes by, and then the devil's got you in your knees. It's time that you're not satisfied coming to the outer court of church, but you want to go to the inner court and the Holy of Holies of the Kingdom. Amen. I'm going to close. Great, great, great. I'm going to close. Praise the Lord. I'm going to close with the last thing the Lord told me how to close. I didn't know much. But the one thing I didn't know when he had taken everything I had, except my wife, everything else was taken. The one thing I did is I opened up my life. So if you ever find yourself in a place that you feel you've lost everything you've got, open up your body. If you think there's no hope, open up your Bible. If you don't know what to do, open up your Bible. And the Lord led me to a scripture that said that in your 50th year is the year of Jubilee. In your 50th year, I don't know how you're near 50, but if you are, I'm going to give you a word today. The Lord says in the 50th year, the slaves have to be set free and all things have to be returned to you. I stood on that word. I said, God, I don't deserve it. I haven't done nothing to earn it. But your word says. Do you not know that God has to perform on his word whether you deserve it or not? Let me say that again. Do you not know that God has to perform on his word whether you deserve it or not? Because he won't lie because 
you've been unfaithful. He won't lie because you've been unfaithful. And I pressed in and I said, God, I said, God, there's got to be more than this. When you got nothing, there's got to be more than this. I said, I'm willing to surrender. How many of us are willing to surrender? I said, I give up. I give up. I give up. And after six months of pressing in, it don't happen overnight. After six months of pressing in, the Lord told me what you find, what you're seeking is at Cedar Bay. Excuse me, is that McKay High School? McKay High School? What's a McKay High School? Other than high school students. And Cynthia, the Lord said, you show up Sunday and you'll find what you're looking for. That's how we met. And I gotta tell you something. When I went to when I went to McKay High School and I saw the power of the Holy Spirit moving in that sanctuary, many of you weren't there back. A lot of you were new in these last two years. But I just gotta say this because the Lord says so. I thought you were crazy. I thought you were crazy. <laughs> It was a peace out moment. <laughs> but check this out. Check this out as I close. I went up because Pastor called me up. And Pastor prayed for me. And I'm going to tell you this straight up. I've never been slain in the spirit before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was like someone had taken a baseball bat and taken a full swing and hit me in the forehead. Mm -hmm. I had no catch. Thank you, someone. Thank you, so much.
listen to what he said. I wanted everything this church had to offer. I wanted it all. If those doors were open, I wanted to be here. In the women's conference, you know. The, uh... <laughs>
family. God wants to know, you to know he loves you. But the calling to the table will not go on forever. There'll come a day where time's up. We heard it today. We heard it today where time was up for some folks. You know, we may not know. Prophet A.J. says, we may not know when the Lord's coming. We don't know when he's coming for you. That's right. We all don't know we'll be here next Sunday. So he calls you, and he don't just call you to salvation. He calls you into the kingdom. He calls you to be a child. You know, Travis, the Lord says you lost one father, but don't forget you got another father. Right. Amen. Amen. I had to lose my daddy before I found my dad. That's a good word. Amen. God is calling this day. And there is someone in here. They needed to hear that. They needed restoration. They needed encouragement. The first time God gave me this word a month ago, it was going to be a yell at you. And over time, he softened his heart. And it became an I love you and encourage you. Even encouraged me this morning. That God wants you to know the glass is half full. And not half empty. Amen. So I thank the Lord for this. I'm just going to give it to the pastor. How many of you found yourself in that category that you have not been coming to the table? That's right. Because of excuses. That's right. Oh. Every half of all I could do. We yeah. all need to be doing more. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, first of all, we thank you. Thank you. The God that